Most followers of Muhammad have been indoctrinated to believe that the Quran that they have today is the same as the one that was revealed to Muhammad 1400 years ago. But the Samarkand and the Topkapi Qurans prove otherwise. What are the facts? We have shown in our chapters 18, 27, 29, 36, 46, 50, 54, 78, 90, and 94. The different occasions and stories as documented by the followers of Muhammad regarding missing, abrogated, abrogating, and interloped verses in the Quran. This chapter reveals another aspect of these differences that completely negate the Muhammadan assertions that the Quran that we have today is the same as that allegedly revealed to Muhammad 1400 years ago. Our listeners must be aware by now that irrespective of the enormous number of references that we recite and are available to all in the world to read, the followers of Muhammad have absolutely no choice but to refute reality, facts, and documentary evidence, although all of these are the product of Muhammadan Muslim records. The reason is obvious and very simple. Since to accept any of these records as fact renders the allegedly incorruptible Quran null and void. The believers have absolutely no option but to be in a permanent state of denial, denial, denial. According to Muhammadan sources themselves, it is estimated that there were at the very beginning of Islam about 26 versions of the Quran that belonged to the different companions of Muhammad. They existed long before the Quran was put in a canonized version by Uthman who destroyed all the others. Among the most important ones that were destroyed were written by several of Muhammad's very close companions. Ibn Mas'ud, Ubay bin Kalb, Ali bin Abi Talib, Al-Ash'ari and Al-Aswad. When Uthman bin Affan canonized the Medinan Codex, he ordered all of them burnt. Among the oldest Qur'ans in existence today are Samarkand Codex in the Tashkent Library in Uzbekistan and the Topkapi Codex in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul, Turkey. Both are written in the Kufic script without diacritical marks. There are some 1,700 textual differences between them and the current versions of the Qur'an. It is extremely important to point out that almost all of these manuscripts and documents are neither dated nor do they have details of their place of origin, making it very difficult to pinpoint their time and source. Bukhari 6.468, narrated by Ibrahim. The companions of Abdullah bin Mas'ud came to Abi Darda. He asked them, who among you can recite the Quran as Abdullah recites it? They replied, all of us. He asked, who among you knows it by heart? They pointed at al qama Then he asked al qama how did you hear Abdullah bin Mas'ud reciting Surah Al-Layl, the night, number 92? al qama recited, by the male and the female. Abu Ad-Darda said, I testify that I heard the Prophet reciting it likewise, but these people want me to recite it as, and by him who created male and female. But by Allah, I will not follow them. The above hadith, shows that the Muslims from different regions disagreed as to the way a particular verse should be read. Those who learned the Quran from Abdullah bin Mas'ud said Surah Al-Layl 92.1 as by the male and the female, while other Muslims said, and by him who created male and female. Thus the early Muslims had not all memorized the Quran the same way. We see this problem again in the following hadith, Bukhari 6.527 narrated by Ibn Abbas. Omar said, Obey was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran. Yet we leave some of what he recites. Obey said, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's apostle and will not leave for anything whatsoever. But Allah said, none of your revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Al-Baqarah 2.106. This hadith clearly shows that the companions of Muhammad disagreed over which verses were abrogated or removed. Here we see that Obey continued to recite the Quran with verses that the other companions considered to have been abrogated. It is obvious that Obey refused to accept that these verses had been abrogated for he says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's apostle and will not leave for anything whatsoever. The hadith then quotes Surah Al-Baqarah 2.106 to explain that this was an example of abrogation. The result, however, was that the companions recited the Quran differently for Obey continue to recite the abrogated verses. The above two hadiths record how Mas'ud and Ubay 
recited the Quran differently to other Muslims. We have already been informed that these two men were recommended by Muhammad as men worthy to learn the Quran from. However, since their collections of the Qurans were not the same, this caused problems for the Muslims who learned the Quran from them. The Muslim scholar Labib said records that the Syrians, we are told, contented with the Iraqis, the former following the reading of Ubay ibn Ka'b, the latter that of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, each accusing the other of unbelief. Some Muslim scholars like Labib said and Ahmed von Denfer have claimed that the different collections of the Quran made by Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay and other companions were only intended for private use. However, the hadith quoted above show that the companion Ibn Mas'ud taught his version of the Quran to his students as did Ubay and that in time these students were in conflict with each other. Muslim history and recent archaeological discoveries also support the conclusion that these collections were not for private use but for public use. We see how this problem was resolved in the next hadith, Bukhari 6.510, narrated by Anas bin Malik. Hudayfa bin al-Yaman came to Uthman at the time when the people of Sham and the people of Iraq were waging war to conquer Armenia and Azerbaijan. Hudayfa was afraid of them, the people of Sham and Iraq, differences in the recitation of the Quran. So he said to Uthman, O oh, chief of the believers, save this nation before they differ about the Quran. So Uthman sent a message to Hafsa saying, Send us the manuscripts of the Quran so that we may compile the Quranic materials in perfect copies and return the manuscripts to you. Hafsa sent it to Uthman. Uthman then ordered Zayd bin Thabit, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Sa'id bin Al-As, and Abdul Rahman bin Harith bin Hisham to rewrite the manuscript in perfect copies. They did so, and when they had written many copies, Uthman returned the original manuscript to Hafsa. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. The problem of having different versions of the Quran was resolved by summarily burning all seven variations that Muhammad allowed, as well as the collections made by the other companions. Thus, thenceforth, all oral and written traditions would have to conform to Uthman's standardized version of the Quran. Our listeners should note that the Bible has never had a wholesale burning to standardize its texts in the way that the Quran has. The next question that we need to ask is, did Uthman and his team do any editing or selecting when they made their versions of the Quran? The next hadith shows us that there was editing and selecting involved. Bukhari 8.817 narrated by Umar ibn Khattab. Allah sent Muhammad with the truth and revealed the holy book to him and among what Allah revealed was the verse of the Rajm, the stoning of married persons, male or female, who commit illegal sexual intercourse. And we did recite this verse and understood and memorized it. I'm afraid that after a long time has passed, somebody will say, by Allah, we do not find the verse of the Rajm in Allah's book and thus they will go astray by leaving an obligation which Allah has revealed. It is obvious that Umar was convinced that stoning an adulterer was part of the Quran and should not be removed. The modern Quran, however, does not contain these verses. So where have they gone? These verses must have been removed by those who were in charge of the text of the Quran. What is clear is that Umar remembered these verses and did not think that they should have been edited while others obviously did, and so today they are not in the modern Qur'an. In summation, Muhammad never finalized how the Qur'an was to be recited and allowed variations. There were real variations in the way the Qur'an was being memorized and recited after Muhammad's death, which caused serious problems. Uthman and the team of others did a major amount of editing to produce a standard text of the Qur'an. Then Uthman ordered all other Qur'ans to be burnt and his version to be made the only standard version of the Muslim world. Oral and written tradition now had to conform to Uthman's standard version. Some of the companions, like Ibn Mas'ud and Ali bin Abi Talib, were not happy with Uthman's actions and suffered for it. In conclusion, at the beginning of this article we considered the following claims. That the text of the Qur'an is entirely reliable, that it has been as it is, unaltered, unedited, not tampered with in any way since the time of revelation. That the Qur'an was memorized by Muhammad and then dictated to his companions. 
and written down by scribes who cross-checked it during his lifetime. Not one word of his 114 chapters have ever been changed over the centuries. So-called believers and unbelievers, having now recited many of the hadiths and other sources, it is obvious that these Muslim claims are an exaggeration and have no support at all from the authoritative hadiths. In fact, the hadiths record the exact opposite. They say that Muhammad never standardized the Quran and allowed variations and that the early Muslims memorized the Quran differently. Then Uthman and the team of scholars edited and standardized one version of the Quran and had all the others burnt. I have no doubt that the collection of the Quran that Uthman made is one good record of what Muhammad recited. However, it was not the only good collection that was made and it was not a collection made by Muhammad.